Have you seen this week's charts? Shed 7's sixth album has just gone in at number one on the UK album charts. While, simultaneously, Liam Gallagher and John Squire are at number one on the singles sales chart, number one on the physical singles chart, and number two on the singles downloads charts. Some of us have been waiting a very long time for the British charts to look like this again. What a fantastic start to 2024. If you haven't heard it yet, Shed 7's album, A Matter of Time, is absolutely fantastic, easily up there with the best stuff they've ever done. According to The Guardian, the band who saw off competition from Louis Capaldi and Taylor Swift told The Independent that they were buzzing, saying, It's taken us 30 years to get to this point, and it feels like we're bigger and better than ever, which is crazy. According to The Independent, the band felt they were underappreciated in the 90s by the music press, who were perhaps more occupied by the antics of the Gallagher brothers and their rivalry with Blur. Rick Witter said, Back in the 90s, we never had a front cover on the NME. But we've proved our longevity. For a long time, we were just playing our 90s hits and felt like we were becoming a nostalgia act. But now, it's a totally different beast. It's given us a whole new lease of life. The album also features a team-up with Pete Doherty from The Libertines on the last track, Throwaways. It also features Rowetta from The Happy Mondays on track 5, In Ecstasy, and Laura McClure from Reverend and the Makers on track 6, Tripping With You. So massive, heartfelt congratulations to Rick and the lads. Keep flying the flag for Yorkshire. In the main UK singles charts this week, Liam and John Squire's single Just Another Rainbow came in at number 16. But personally, I don't really consider the main chart to actually be all that legitimate. If this were the original charts as they were structured for the vast majority of their existence pre-internet and based on sales, Just Another Rainbow would be number one easily. And you can see that's true because it's top of the sales and physical sales charts. Now, I know I have harped on about this before, but I don't really see the main chart itself, the combined sales and streaming chart, as actually being all that accurate. And that's because it's telling you what people are listening to, not buying. So you get idiotic stuff like ABBA's Greatest Hits being on the streaming album chart for 1,132 weeks. That's nearly 22 years. And on the main singles charts, it's the same. Mr Brightside spent 491 weeks on the charts. That's nearly 10 years. Riptide by Vance Joy is at number 23 after 446 weeks on the chart, a similar amount of time. My personal belief is the best place we can look right now for what is actually happening is the physical and the sales charts. They tell you what is happening right now, this moment, in the UK, on the ground. And right now, we have two top-tier British indie rock acts at their respective number one positions – in the album and single charts. I really think that we can take this as an incredibly positive sign that at long last, change is in the air. Now, I'm right about to go off on a little bit of a tangent. I want to explain why I think cultural change is on the cards right now, and also why I believe that's relevant for rock and roll. Anyone with their finger on the pulse and an ear to the pavement can see that new attitudes are starting to move into positions of prominence. And it at least seems to me that a paradigm shift has just started in our culture. I reckon times are changing right now. And that's relevant to us because, as always happens, I think the music might be about to move along with it. I really think it is at least possible that we could be right on the edge of a new cultural movement in which rock and roll can thrive again. But why do I think that? All of what I'm about to say is nothing but speculation, it's just my opinion, but for what it's worth, here we go. Let me explain. For the past 10 years or so, give or take, the dominant cultural movement in the UK has been one that most people call either cancel culture or woke. That culture has risen and risen and risen in Western society, and the music that has been mainstreamed during this time has been, unfortunately, absolute rubbish. I do believe, however, since the last few months of 2021, a corner has been turned and culture has started to change. 
I believe that the old movement of woke and cancel culture has actually already had its peak, and that the race into the next movement, whatever that may be, has now started to gather pace. You can always kind of tell when any given movement is coming to the end of its life, because its name kind of becomes a derogatory insult, as the word woke now has. Historically, in the UK, a radical shift in culture has usually also meant a very different type of music coming to the fore as well. Now, I don't know, but I've got fingers crossed on both hands that the time has come for a resurgence of homegrown British guitar bands riding on a wave of cultural change once again. And let's be honest, if what we've seen in the first two weeks of 2024 is anything to go by, the signs are at least encouraging. In a previous video, I made the point that rock stars during this latest cultural phase have not been able to speak their minds freely anymore. And that has, for some reason, resulted in that rock and roll baton, that I don't give a shit punk attitude being handed off to stand up comics. I pinpoint the turning of the corner with the woke movement as having had three very specific moments in the past two years, all of which were stand up comedy specials and all of which were on Netflix. The first was in October 2021 and was called The Closer, released in the States by Dave Chappelle. This was, in my view, a moment where popular culture was balancing on the edge of a knife, and Dave came along and pushed it off. Wherever you stand on him, his comedy and that special, you can probably see that this was a turning point. I personally believe that no subject should be exempt from satire. We've got to be careful about getting religious about things. And whatever you think of that special... In it, Dave unashamedly went after many of the woke movement's most forbidden subjects. The Closer got a 40% approval rating from establishment journalists and a 96% approval rating from viewers, which should tell you all you need to know about how the general public were turning against the established party line. As was completely predictable, after Dave's special was released, the Inquisition got to work immediately calling for it to be removed from the streaming service. Netflix refused. There was then a walkout in protest by some of Netflix's own employees in LA in America, and Netflix still refused to pull that special. They wouldn't cancel Dave Chappelle. And that moment, I believe, for good or for bad, was a bit of a turning point. The first move towards the opening of a floodgate culturally, a bit like the drop of a tiny pebble that ends up starting a landslide. Now, of course, this is still just my opinion. I could be wrong. But that's how it started over in the States. And then, six months later in the UK, along came Ricky Gervais. Ricky released a stand-up special called Supernature six months after Chappelle released The Closer. He shamelessly took things miles further and savaged pretty much every forbidden subject in the woke cancel culture playbook. The online reaction was the same yet again a 31% approval rating from establishment journalists and a 91% approval rating from the people. And Supernature went to number one on Netflix. From Dave's special through to Ricky's special, the tide of public opinion turning against the previous cultural movement was staying consistent. Scroll forward to Christmas Day 2023, just three weeks ago. Ricky released Armageddon live in London. Again, he took things further and it went to number one worldwide. Chappelle also released a new one where he was similarly punk, and that went in at number two. And it seems that I'm not the only one who can see the way the wind is blowing here. Because Ricky Gervais just won the first ever Golden Globe for a stand-up special, and it was for that special, Armageddon, a film that is so just openly anti-woke and punk that Ricky might as well have just performed the whole thing dressed like Johnny Rotten. And whether you like him or hate him, that's kind of not the point here, because wherever you stand, whichever side of the fence, hopefully you can see why this is so significant. The Golden Globes, the establishment itself, is now shifting its position to reflect what the majority of the public seem to be thinking. Ricky just won one of the highest establishment accolades possible for something that would have seen him publicly crucified five years ago. Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle have, in my opinion, literally jammed their oars into the water 
and turned the tide of Western culture. Now, of course, it's still early days, and that's just how it looks to me. And I'm now coming back from my tangent. What has all that got to do with rock and roll? Well, music and culture have always moved in tandem. While cancel culture has had a stint in the spotlight, the vast majority of the population in the West have had more than enough of it. As we move into a new phase, we should hopefully expect a shift in popular music as well. A true rock and roll revolution combines great music with riding the next cultural tidal wave. To really hit the heights, the music alone is not enough. It has to become the soundtrack to a generation. And interestingly, we really do seem to be seeing a massive resurgence of rock and roll in the UK. Change is in the air, but we're not there yet. Right now, the big dogs from my generation are absolutely smashing it out of the park. But what we really need for this year to be a real victory is the next generation. We need new bands for the next generation to grow up with as well as the heroes of the 90s that my generation grew up with. Let me know in the comments who you reckon the British indie rock bands of the future are going to be. Who are you listening to that are good enough to be the next Oasis? I already know and have faith in Pastel and Marseille, but there must be others as well. Who out there has the songs, the sound, the look and the attitude? Let me know who you would recommend. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.